You'll know that recent global events at the time of filming, which is April 2022, have led to the threat of skyrocketing electricity prices in the UK. Anybody looking to set up a grow room has likely considered the impact of this impending predicament on their operating costs and wondered how to counter it. To help, we've put together a list of things you should consider to keep your energy bill as low as possible, without sacrificing too much in terms of yield and or quality. Let's review the options. Lighting. Go low on power and high on par. LEDs are the most efficient option when it comes to lighting, but nowadays the wattages of bar fixtures and ultra-intense compact units match or exceed those of HPS systems. Opting for a low-power, high-par model like a Telos represents the smart move if you want to watch your outgoings. These products emit an incredible amount of bright light, 2.5 umol per watt in the case of the Telos 10 Pro Mesh, and only require a relatively low supply of energy, 300 watts using our example. While still managing to fill a 1.2m by 1.2m by 2m area, steering away from a 600W HPS here takes greater initial investment and you might actually see a slight drop off in yield compared to what you could have achieved. However, you will soon start to enjoy improved crop quality and significant energy savings. Low power, high par LEDs too much of a stretch for your budget? No worries. You can still cut energy costs with a standard HPS grow light by picking a digital ballast instead of a magnetic ballast. They're 4-5% to more efficient, and this percentage only increases over time because magnetic variants degrade at a quicker rate. Ventilation. EC fans are the easy winners. Did you know that the motor driving your choice of fan for extraction and intake systems can have a bearing on electricity prices too? Products employing older AC technology use the same power regardless of the speed setting selected, which is adjustable via a traditional resistance-based controller. With EC fans like those from the System Air Revolution Vector, System Air Silenced Revolution Vector, Mammoth Juiced and Mammoth S-Max ranges, a 10% reduction in speed signaled via an EC controller roughly equates to a 10% reduction in power consumption. Again, the prices of this sort of equipment might put some people off, but it really does prove worthwhile in the long run thanks to the much lower operating costs. Growing System – Gravity Power is free Numerous growing systems exist nowadays for hydro, cocoa and soil growers. A pump always plays a key role, moving your nutrient solution in one way or another, which obviously needs electricity. Reverting to pots to save energy seems counterintuitive and somewhat of a backward step. So can you automate feeds without any power? The answer is yes. Autopot systems feature gravity-based designs, where the innovative aqua valve actually grants your plant access to water and nutrients when the level drops below a certain point. Not a single penny is spent operating it. Pick from two different types of system according to your preferred pot size, standard 15 litres or XL 25 litres, available in a wide range of pot configurations, starting at 4 pots and spanning up to 100 pots. Environment. Hook up hardware to an intelligent controller. Generally speaking, you don't want your equipment running at full whack 24-7. Adding one or two smart controllers into the mix to manage different devices should help to keep costs down, by only operating these products when it's absolutely necessary in tune with environmental conditions. For example, the better controllers for your lights go beyond just automating on and off times. Their advanced capabilities also perform functions such as dimming the output according to target temperatures, which will reduce the power consumed. Some, like the gas Enviro controller, can even handle fans, heaters, humidifiers, dehumidifiers, and more simultaneously. On top of the specific items that you pick for your grow room, we've got some handy energy saving tips to share with you. Check these out. Tip one, embrace the nightlife. This is a classic energy saving tip. Even when cost increases do occur for your electricity, you'll still find a separate daytime tariff and nighttime tariff remains in place. If you set your equipment to primarily operate throughout the night, when demand and therefore price sits lower than the day, you'll save a solid chunk on your energy bills. Tip 2. Fully insulate your room. You can buy insulation boards, from Kingspan as an example, to create a fully enclosed growing environment where external factors including the cold have less of an impact on your plants. During the winter, heaters are able to get the cultivation area up to the desired temperature in a much speedier manner and the warmth will stick around for a longer duration, meaning you won't have to spend as much money running them. Tip 3. Overspec equipment if it pays to do so. Now, we're not saying you should go out and buy larger sizes of every product you need, 
that's hardly practical or efficient. But for certain items, it makes total sense. Case in point, climate control units and nutrient chillers. With these types of equipment, a slightly bigger model than required often means you'll be able to operate them for shorter spells, cutting costs from doing so. Tip 4. Keep hot things outside your tent. Anything that generates heat will force your fans to work harder, driving up energy bills. Make sure ballasts, nutrient chillers and all other hot to the touch products sit outside your tent come the summer. In winter, bring them closer or even inside the growing area to reduce heating costs. That just about does it. We hope you found our product selection guide and tips helpful for building a grow room based on low energy costs. In the future, we believe increasing numbers of indoor gardeners will pay extra attention to the energy usage and running costs of their grow room hardware. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more expert growing advice.